This is Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions with Alistair Lynch, Tom Rockliffe. In the midst and of Dylan all Lynch. the tribunal angst and rules interpretations and discussions about the essence of the game, the actual matches being played on the weekend is pretty good. Footy's doing okay. But that's not going to stop us from having unpopular opinions, and that is the name of the show, AFL Unpopular Opinions. Hello, everyone. My name is Dylan Leach. Joining me, like he does each and every week, well, he's back this week. Three flags for the Brisbane Lions, if you don't mind, Alistair Lynch. Uh, good to be back. Rocky Dylan. Yeah, I was on the road last week, so... Um, Where were you? Where were you last year? You, you. At the time of recording, yeah. I was in Junee. Junee? Yeah. Where's Junee, if you don't mind? Junee's half hour west of Wagga. Okay. And um, you know what statue they got up in the middle of June? Wagga, is it Paul Kelly? Nah. A Danaher? Rabs Warren. Rabs Warren? Rabs Warren. And I That'll actually, be jackal. I, actually I didn't get to see it, um, but I was told about it. Um, yeah. The other one's Laurie Daly, is the, okay, so the export out of June. So you're on the proper side of the, you're on. You're definitely on the league side of the Very much Barassi league side. line. Because when, yep. when you said Wagga, I was thinking, oh, there still might be some Aussie rules there. No, I was told about the Barassi line and yeah. Yeah, where that was. And so, so, yeah, yeah if you hear about that. If it's Laurie Daly and Rabs. So I was supposed to be there for about six hours. Yeah. Yeah, it turned out about 28. 28 hours in uh, June, eh? Nah, it goes well. Oh, very good. Can, can you do a Rabs or Ron voice? Nah. Can you do it? Can you do a Rabs? Nah. You gotta go, thought that, I get and thought that. No. No, either can you, apparently. No, it's something. <laughs> <Yeah, cool. laughs> <laughs> no, that's, I'll leave that, I'll leave that nah. for the 12th, man. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty can you good. do a Tom Tom Rockcliffe? Can you do a Rabs Warren voice? No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> or yours was pretty, pretty good, Dylan. Oh, let's do it again. One more. Give us another one. I'm being jackal there, fat man. Yeah, that should, yeah. <laughs> that should get a run. Yeah, Lynch, you worked too hard for me, mate. You got to. Tom start also to played a few. Back. Oh no. And, and but Tom's bio, you played a few games. A few Brisbane games in Brisbane. And, Brisbane and, and if you want a super coach competition, you should probably buy him a beer. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. But um, no, he worked too hard for me, Lynchy. What <laughs> happened? Flight delayed, cancelled. Yeah, it went um, was delayed five minutes, then twenty minutes, then an hour, then four hours, and cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> then flipped to the next day. Got us there on time. Then it's delayed three hours. Regional flights we're talking here. And, uh, yeah, it's Qantas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at, least, like at, Qantas, least, so. at least, unlike Will Anderson, you know, he got banned, for, he got kicked off a flight from Walker, so at least you were able oh, to really? stay on. No, yeah, well, it wasn't full. No, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, no, all good. And then Friday, we'll get to our golf day yes. later, but the big the Hacker Majors. Outage mm. as well. Oh, yeah. Lucky you didn't get caught up in that. We we're on the course. We didn't even know. No, no. It was a, yeah, it was a good place to be during yeah. the uh, Microsoft yeah. outage. Unfortunately, the Neds app. It did feel. Uh, the, managed to avoid it. And did it? Oh, well, that's yes. good. It so did feel like a different world in the golf day that afternoon. Didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it was, I think there was we'll, a few on another planet. We'll, we'll, um, we'll get to our full description <laughs> of the Hacker Majors yeah. uh, later on in the program, but of course uh, a forward sell is that uh, Lynchy Tom played with, uh, of course, Ryan of the Snapshot yep. and Fogs from the NRL podcast yeah. for Team Neds, and I was just but, monitoring the hole-in-one competition. Well, I, I just didn't touch a ball. Four-ball best ball that turned into a two-ball. <laughs> Lynchy was clutch. Much late. <laughs> the boys were jaded, let's say, by the end of the round. Hey, um, to the actual footy, it was a pretty bloody good weekend of football on the field. Uh, I was saying off air before we went to air, I thought uh, the two best games were the best of both worlds in terms of what a great game of footy is because on Friday night, you sort of tuned into Adelaide Essendon thinking, oh, this could be a bit of a nothing game, but you just got a classic old school shootout, which for neutrals is just wonderful to watch. Coaches would hate it, but everyone else loves that kind of football. And, and you partly thought it was going to be a nothing game because absolutely. Essendon would roll Adelaide. Yeah. And it was seven goals there, seven goals here, just swings and roundabouts. And then... Cost some, us the multi, that game. Yeah, it did cost us the multi. <laughs> Tell you what, the multi legs were fascinating this week because our multis only just made it. Our two legs only just yeah. got up. Well, mine was over halfway through the third. But still, I mean, the Giants won by 39 points, and I had one to 39, so I got a tick, you got a tick, Ryan didn't get one. Ryan we'll get cost to that us. next. Um, but, so you had that. And then on Sunday, yesterday, so we're recording this on a Monday afternoon, time stamping at the Gabba, um, I thought the Swans Brisbane uh, game was as good an arm wrestle top of the table clash that you could possibly get. It was an incredible fantastic game. match of football. Which you would have thought would have been a shootout, yeah. but yeah. probably yeah. It wasn't. And well, it was, again, blustery conditions, certainly in Sydney and Brisbane over the weekend. Pretty blustery, but um, great game. And Sydney didn't lose any supporters in that. I mean, they had three players down, basically. Um, 
Will Haywood was out there in a Zimmer frame and uh, performed really well late. I mean, he was, he was great. Uh, obviously struggling with that ankle injury. Then Rampy and um, Tommy Papley out early in the game. So the, the fact that they hung in there for that long, I just thought in that third quarter, what, they kicked two goals six. Mm. They could have iced the game then. But uh, no, courageous for them and great win in the end by Brisbane. Are you two old Lions excited for how they're progressing into the finals now? Is oh, it, yeah. Is it, is it, I think we'd written them off. Oh, yeah. round six. I think yeah. they were cooked. If you went back to maybe the Doing buy, a few eulogies like, as to where Brisbane was at. I think we'll, we'd sort of put a line through them, said they need yeah. to sort of look to play a few kids, see what they're made <laughs> of, and then they're, they were sitting second after that win. But that's, it just shows how close the competition is this year. They lose out they're sitting seventh. So had Sydney been able to find a, a goal late, um, it's such an even competition. I think... You wouldn't be disappointed if those two teams played off in the no, grand final. Absolutely. The AFL certainly wouldn't be disappointed if it was a Sydney versus Brisbane grand final, that's for sure. And you'd reckon uh, Brisbane would prefer to play a Sydney at the MCG than one of the yep. big Melbourne clubs? <laughs> yep. <laughs> absolutely. Although well, Brisbane have only won grand finals against big Melbourne clubs. Yeah, yeah. The MCG. but you'd rather play Sydney there than Carlton, yeah. I would have thought. Well, maybe. Well, Carlton aren't going to be there, are they? Oh, who would know with this? And the, again, the Bulldogs. I mean, geez, you'd be going grey if you're supporting the Bulldogs. They can look like a premier team I'm, and then be awful. I'm, there I'm a chance looking, this weekend. Well, absolutely, there are a chance. Well, Sydney. I'm looking at the ladder and, you know, you just see like, okay, so Essendon are the biggest waste of space for eighth on the ladder I've ever seen right now. They're the biggest oh, so frauds. You're they're off. the biggest frauds <laughs> in the top eight, aren't they? Uh, well, are they top absolute four. fraudulent Maybe top eight team because I look at the Western Bulldogs' efforts on the weekend. I look at Hawthorne's efforts on the weekend. Wasn't that Jeez, sensational? The aren't good. they just a fun team to watch? Um, Melbourne, not so sure about Gold Coast. Well, we know about their they could, they're going to have the mindset. red shorts. They don't like the white shorts. No, they don't like the Smith's Chris jumper, yeah. that's for sure. Um, the uh, well, I think they've even lost some away games in the in the red shorts as well. Yeah, they did. The, 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 the Suns, I should say. The game was yeah, um, yeah, in they, the red shorts. They just, uh, I don't know what happens when they leave Carrara, but... Uh, and Collingwood's looking a bit shaky as well. So, yeah, you just don't know. And the live ladder, just the, it's going to get to that stage now of the season where the live ladder will be appearing on the TV during the match all and just time. going up and down. It's going to be crazy, and I'm all here for it. But then, yeah, like even Geelong, you think that they'd turn a corner and they were back, like it's top four and away they go. And then, as you said, Lynchy, the dogs do a number on them on the weekend. So great round of footy, but um, we'll get into unpopulars. Well, is that where, I mean, it is a, the whole thing is a contradiction at the moment because like, there's a lot of complaints about um, rule changes, interpretations, tribunal. But we've got the most competitive season mm. in memory, I would have thought. It's it's really interesting you say that because you feel like when you follow footy Monday to Friday, yep. it's a crisis, it's frustrating, yep. you are, you know, you've got your pitchforks ready to head down to AFL House and call for mutiny, and then you get a few good games on the weekend, it's like, Oh, hang on, everything's all right. But we only say this stuff during the week because we love the game and we want what's best for it. So Tom, I'll let you uh, get into the unpopular opinions because you look re revved up and ready to go. Well, ready to go, yeah. I was just yeah. having a quick look. Three games between 2nd and 13th. So Outstanding. So it's, it's a good, even competition. But um, for me, the unpopular opinion, they want to suspend players for all these head knocks and accidental tackles and some good acts that we've seen. We've seen players get three weeks for perfectly executed tackles and, and then get off. And, and shout out to the appeals board last week for the common sense that they applied. But everything's about protecting the head. Technicality. Yeah. And that's all That's all we hear about is protecting yeah. the head, protecting the head, making sure we look after the head. Well, I can tell you the AFL doesn't really care about it if they continue to let players wave away umpires, uh, wave away doctors and stay out on the ground. We've seen it earlier in the year. We've seen Jeremy Cameron do it. Mm -hmm. AFL tick off on it and say, nah, nothing to see here, all good. We've seen it again on the weekend. Um, I think they're looking at three different incidents from the weekend. Um, the biggest one's obviously Harry Mackay yesterday, but they're also looking at Harris Andrews, the Lions, and one other um, from the weekend. So... We need to get to a point where the NRL is already. That so what, what is the NRL system? The NRL have a um, – so a, our bunker, is it? Well, yeah, they, the oh, sorry, they, they've got a bunker. We've got a – Ark. Ark. Got? Ark. Yeah. Ark. So yep. they need a doctor in there or someone to say – Don't they have that They already? need to stop the game. Well, you need to stop the game and get them off the ground. 
So they, yeah, well, I think that's the gap. The gap there, is, there's observers, I, and yep. I thought there was an observer in the arc. So, so the um, team doctors, you can see them visibly looking at the footage yesterday. They go out there to try and get. Um, I'm just going to use the Carlton one because that yep. was the most prevalent one. Harry McKay try and get him off. He yep. says, "No, no, no, I'm not coming off. I'm all good." We see him kick a goal a minute later. Then they do end up. I think they ended up doing a HIA on him yeah. at three quarter time and into the last quarter. But we need to stop the game. It just mm-hmm. needs to stop. If you're serious about protecting the head and where you've gone to and all the rule changes you've made, and there's so many discontent and upset people by what's being suspended and what players are being suspended for, we need to halt the game, get them off the ground, mm-hmm. give them, let the sub go on, let the sub go on for that 15 minute period, and if he passes the HIA, that's fine. Do then I'll do it. I think they do it exceptionally well. The, um, the ref just stops the game, player comes from the field, they replace them and just go on your merry way. So I agree totally with that and I've got a similar sort of unpopular opinion, so almost an extension of that. We hear from the AFL how they're trying to create uh, a safe environment and everything about the game they want to see safe. And I heard Laura Kane mention they've made 35 rule changes under the banner of health and wellbeing and safety. So, and How many? 35. 35. Yeah, it was an interview on 3AW Friday night. So interpretations and rule changes, yeah. yeah. And, okay. and so making it safe... Yeah. But I think there's there's a couple of things. I agree with what you're saying, that when a concussion or a head knock has happened, h- however it's happened, whether it was against uh, outside the rules or in the rules in general play, whatever, yeah, stop the game. So they've got the arc. So when, when there's a decision and they're going back to the centre of the ground, then there's someone in their ear saying, no, nah, we're going to do a review. Absolutely. Categorically, it should be the same thing. Stop the game. Mm-hmm. And when we're talking about the safety of players, let's talk about the, the care after the contact. And that's whether it's after the contact on the field, after the contact at the end of their career, and when they're off the list. So how are we better... C- care and there's been a number of players that and you know uh, all too well number of players that have suffered concussion that have now got outside of the system that haven't had the care and i think that's where they're starting to really blow up and seeking um yeah support from the afl via legal action yeah so that's that after care i think that's where we've got to get safe now and i think there's got to be um because we do and as a past player and even a parent watching footy you, you know there's risk on the field and I think the behind play stuff the nasty tackles the sling tackle all that sort of stuff that's great they've been great but we've got to be very careful to protect the game as well there is risk when you and if we're going to we're getting very close we haven't yet but we're getting closer to not being allowed to tackle mm. yeah well uh, even just on that sorry. point you you say about protecting the head and protecting the play like Maynard on the weekend throws an elbow in a Ginovan's chin hits him flush I, we get a I, fine for that yeah, I'm staggered. I was surprised at that. And nothing against Maynard at all. But that was an elbow to the chin. That's Absolutely. extremely dangerous. And the other one we spoke about before, Nick Blakey, oh. how he got tunnelled. Now, would he have... Um, who was that? Eric Hipwood? Eric Hipwood, yeah. yeah. Um, so if he uh, had concussion out of the back of that, Nick, or even worse, with that tunnelling action, um, Eric would be in all sorts of strife. I thought he would be. Well... Yeah. But that's the thing. We're going so much on results. Yeah. So if Nick got concussion, he would be in a strife, Eric. Whereas now, I think we've got to outlaw that action. Action. So that that was dangerous. That was incredibly dangerous. The, the thing, that the main get- one was very dangerous. The thing that gets me. So you've got Isaac Heaney, which we all spoke about. You two said it should have been a week. I didn't agree with it, but yeah. that's just the way the rules are now. Yeah. So he's throwing the arm back and gets a week for that but yeah. then you've got like Zach Butters Jesse Hogan standing there they're, I know they went to hit him in the chest but hitting him in the chin yeah. they get a fine like there's just the inconsistency that's what the frustration comes from so we should be sitting there talking about great round of footy how good footy's mm. going but we're so confused with this and if they're serious about protecting the head simple fix yeah, So and the Toby Bedford one from last week yeah so, so he's got off so he got off so he should have so is that an illegal? Is that illegal? What he did? Well, I'm not sure, but it, no, I, yeah, the I don't confusion know. as well stands with the fact that you go in, you got three weeks, and then you go to zero. And yeah, but that was an illegal technicality. So if it, you would imagine that if that happens again, 
he gets three weeks. Yeah. But I was looking at it thinking, well, that's part of the game. It wasn't a nasty driving no. tackle or anything like that. He's dragged him down. He hit his head. So that's where, again, I would see that as that's part of the game risk. Now, I think from the AFL's point of view, look after uh, Taranto from that time. Yep. So get him straight off the ground and let's look after him forever and a day to make sure he's fine. But that, I felt, was part of the game. Lynchy, can I go two or three steps back to what you were saying about protecting the game, not just protecting the head, but protecting the game and yeah. the spirit of the game and... You know, eventually, if we feel that the tackle might be out, it, it's it's heading towards a path where the tackle will be outlawed. And I, I think I said this on the pod a couple of weeks ago. And I know this sounds wanky when you suggest something like this, but I actually think it's important when we talk about rule changes and in, interpretations, and when we do this process, does footy need to, and and the game of Australian rules football, not the AFL, but the game of Australian rules football. Does it need, similar to cricket, like a spirit of Australian rules football factored in when you write these rules? Do we need to sort of take a step back and go, well, what's the purpose of this game? What's the aim of it? Why are we playing this? And why? And how do we make rules to go around what is in the spirit of the game? Because so, what is the, so what is the game? So the, the yeah. game is kicking, marking, would have thought tackling. Fast moving, tackling. Yeah. So within that, yeah. and what was the, there's a charter... Yeah, ten or so years ago, which sort of encapsulate what the game is. Exactly. So just work to make it as safe as possible like, in that within that. We can't change it too much. Like the extreme case, like a, this is ridiculous. But yeah, if you're a a cage fighter or a, a boxer, you mm. go into that contest knowing there's risk. Mm -hmm. How safe can you make that? It's all about when the injury happens, looking after the person moving forward. There is risk in the game. Otherwise, the game changes to a different game. it is a yeah. contact sport. Well, that's the thing. You sign up as yeah. a player, as a pass player. You know that you're going to be hurt at some point in your career and your head's not off limits. At some point, there is going to be an accident where you're going to accident, sustain yeah. a concussion. You're never going to ever eliminate it, but it's the protection post it yeah. and trying to eliminate the dangerous acts. The, the, so yeah, the, the, the nasty um, bullshit the, stuff. The elbow behind the, behind the ball, Absolutely. the Gold yeah. Coast week but before. Th this is what I mean. I think when you talk about that charter, I think that's really important to look back on, and it, it, sort of, it could sort of like be a constitution for football, and I actually think that's really important because we are letting... The lawyers overtake the game and overtake the... And this is why, despite the fact that between 3rd and 13th on the ladder, it's anyone's contest but, yeah, uh, four uh, weeks out left in the home and away the, season and we're talking about this. I know we've got, like... And we all agree that there's too much and it's when you go to a tribunal, it's pretty much like a court case. But mm. it's going to end that way because of the people, ex-players are suing because of concussions mm. and et cetera. So I understand it from the AFL. AFL side of view that they want to protect it as best they can in a legal um, standpoint, but you don't want to lose the fabric of your game. So you've got to get the balance right, um, and you, you certainly need, I think, um, ex players in and around that. Um, yep. People that are respected within the game, that have played the game, that understand that things happen on the footy field. Let's l limit when, it as best we can. When, yeah. So you two obviously played in different generations. When you signed up at a professional level, so when you first got drafted, respectively, in your era, did they tell you anything about head injuries and what you risked or oh, what the signs were? Was there, was there any procedure around that? No, let's, and let's be serious. Where the game has got to now yeah. is a much better state than when I first started Absolutely. playing. Absolutely. There was things going on behind the ball. There's head knocks. Yeah. If you got knocked out, if you could... You could acknowledge what day it was or read the scoreboard, you're straight back out. And you're encouraged to go back and, out. And we've but, seen the results of that with, you know, heroic stories of 1989 grand final. Well, absolutely. So, so the game, and this is not criticising the AFL about the, a lot of the things they've done now. It's just mm. knowing where the line's going to be. And, and I think the major thing you said about the litigation sort of stuff or the class actions, I reckon a lot of that is not so much just because, and I'm guessing, is not so much because of the concussion, it's the care afterwards. So whether it's whether it's even a cost to the game that there needs to be extra insurance policies taken out for each player. So if someone does fall on hard times, they've got the support there. So it's, I feel it's the care afterwards is the big thing. But yeah, we've got to be cognizant of the what the game is because if we keep trying to make it safer, then get to a stage where it's not the game. Mm. 
And I did hear a comment, and I know cornsey has been on about this uh, quite a bit, about getting to the stage where the marking contest needs someone in the head. Will that be outlawed? I did hear that question posed to Laura, and she, she avoided the answer, but she said there is no good concussions sort of thing. So it's just like you can't outlaw that. And if you're trying to make it safe... I could see it could get outlawed. <laughs> but that's the thing. So you've got a Mark of the Year award that's worth $50,000 or something and uh, business class flights around the world on the basis that you take a hanger. So yeah. you may need someone in the head, but then you want to outlaw it out of the game. This is where the confusion lies, I think. Yeah, and yeah, just where it goes to. So yeah, it, yeah. It, we can't have it going to that extent. Yeah. We, we can't have it going to where tackling isn't allowed, basically. Yeah, touch footy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they've done a lot of great things, a lot of great things, and the game's in good nick. It's just there's a fair bit of confusion, and if we're going to talk about safety for the players, I feel there's some risk, and we're just the safety is care afterwards. It's a risk-reward game, a bit like the product that Nets is, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Moving along, and speaking of how good the game is going, I'll mm. um, bring sort of my unpopular opinion, and I think that's more for teams who have recently won premierships. I think uh, the evenness of the competition and how it's sort of been pretty much this decade, pretty much since the start of this decade, means for the first time in a while, and I actually can't even recall a decade where it hadn't happened, we could be looking at a decade of no back-to-back premierships. Because when you think about it, Richmond won in 2020, didn't make the finals the following year. Melbourne won in 21, out in straight sets 22. Geelong, 23, didn't make it last year. Uh, Collingwood... Uh, followed by, um, it's looking like Collingwood might not be. Colling, it's looking harder for Collingwood to win back-to-back flags. Yeah, Martin. I think eight. I think the evenness of the competition and the equalisation has caught up, and we are going to see an era where the premiers is a different flavour most years now. Because this, the first part of this century, we've been spoilt with dynasties. Of course, there was your dynasty at the Lions. We had the Cats. We had the Hawks. We had. I mean, I. I you can talk about the Tigers any time you like, but we saw the same teams always winning the Premiership. I don't think we're going to see that now. No, and that is just a recognition that it's a great competition. It's very even. Anyone can make it, and there's going to be big fluctuations um, up or down. And I think that's the evening out of the, the back-to-back expansion teams, not yeah. the terrible teams uh, around for years. Because mm-hmm. all that talent, it was all going to the Suns one year, all going to the Giants the next year. So it was back to back where the bottom teams at the time couldn't get talent in. So they've, it's bounced out beautifully. It's a, it's a great competition. And we're about to tinker with that with Lynch's Tasmania, Tasmania team. Tasmania team so uh, also. It's going to be a bit different. It's not going to be. I think they've learnt their lessons from that. But it's a big call, I think. You think about the Brisbane Lions and now we know where they were at. They were in the grand final last year. That they look like they may have a stretch where they could get close. Mm. Oh, geez. Yeah. So I reckon I reckon you might be off the money there. I think we would wouldn't see be the, it back would to it, back. It wouldn't be the first no. time on this program. Last that three I've been years, off the, money. Um, the Suns go three peat. What do you reckon? Last three years, the Ooh, Suns of go the three decade. Pete. No, the, no, dimmer. <laughs> no. Well, they don't Speaking play the grand final at dynasties um, and your Carrara. and your tigers that you yeah. were just speaking about. We got a fair bit of feedback about saying they shouldn't be in the competition, uh, etc. Yes, uh, I but was reading they, some of the fan mail. You, was that last week? I was reading they? some of the fan oh, mail right. that you got last oh, week. Was, yeah. Yeah. Well, we were speaking Pretty about. Happy I wasn't on that one. Then yeah. there's about nineteen thousand yeah, turned up uh, to the G. Yeah, yeah. A couple, a couple <laughs> weeks ago. But they yeah. took inspiration from you a couple of weeks ago up here at the Gabba. They left at three quarter time from Adelaide Oval. The players this yes. week, Richmond. Yeah, no, that, that's very good. That's a good, <laughs> good line there, Tom. <laughs> I, you know what? <laughs> In all seriousness, the seventeenth and eighteenth teams on the ladder are probably the most competitive seventeenth and eighteenth teams. Wow! At the moment, Richmond the moment. actually. Richmond are playing good football at the moment. They're not. But they They're weren't. not easy beats. North Melbourne I said, aren't easy beats. I reckon six weeks ago I said North Melbourne's probably the worst team we've had in and, the last 20 years. And they've you've been, spurred them they've on. Been, they've been a lot better. They have been a lot I, better. I look forward to Richmond Collingwood on the weekend. Ooh. Will you, your mob front up? I think we will. I reckon it'll be huge. I reckon we absolutely will. Yeah, huge be, game. Imagine being able to put a full stop on Collingwood season from Richmond's yeah, perspective. That's it. That would um, that'd be interesting. And also, if, 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 if we're having Richmond indulgence... Um, I'm a bit over. I was a bit over some of the hot takes about Adam Uze not yelling at his players uh, from 
old mate Kane, like, Kane, you're a bit tired, mate. Get a new opinion, would you? Um, <laughs> he's flying. Stop, no, he, look, Kane's a very good an- an analysis very good. of the game, but, you know, he, he's on a lot, and he's like, you've got better volcanoes to do than just pointing out that Adam Uze doesn't yell at his players. Like, come on, Kane. <laughs> <laughs> If you're going to be a hot take merchant, at least do some different material. Um, <laughs> what? Very harsh. No, and, I... and also, the, the, I, I thought some of the um, observations, It's uh, there was a silly question on Adam Uze's press conference. It's like, Dusty's got a sore back. Why was he allowed to go overseas to see his family? He went to New Zealand, which is closer to Melbourne than Perth. We let players go to Perth all the time when they're injured to see family. Like, honestly. Honestly. <laughs> I know oh, Dusty doesn't do an interview, but stop asking stupid questions about him. I, I just don't want him to go to the Gold Coast. But anyway, we'll, we'll move on. Yep. Um, snapshot time. Yeah, we're going to. I'm looking forward to this. This week. Because I know, as we mentioned earlier, you and I, our legs just got up. Saluted. Well, take us through the legs from last week, Thank can you? Yeah. yeah. So just we had a... Essendon minus 10.5 on Friday night. Ugh. So we were out no, on yeah. Friday night. Yeah. Dylan took uh, GWS 1 to 39. They won by 39. And I had <laughs> Kerno 4 plus on Sunday afternoon. Nice. Bit of value got yeah. us up there. Yeah. Over halfway through the third, he'd done that. Nice. nice. But it didn't matter, did it? <laughs> but you fight on for another week. We go again. Here oh, they yeah. are, Ryan and Rocky and the Snapshot. All the betting trends you need to know from the world of footy. This is It the... is that part of the week where we chat some betting with the stats pig, Tommy Rockliffe. Uh, we're still searching for that elusive second multi-win, mate. We went close last week. I let the team down. Um, but looking ahead, we've got a big round 20 coming up. Some key rivalry games. What are you looking forward to? Yeah, it should be a, a good round of footy, actually, shouldn't it? I think... Um, Port Adelaide-Carlton on Friday night is a good game of footy. Carlton, short turnaround, whether they can back up. A few injury concerns. Q clash. Gold Coast at home, they, they don't lose. They've got the Lions. Can they get the job done? Melbourne Giants is a, a really interesting one from a betting perspective. I can't believe the Giants have come up at um, currently Monday afternoon. Time to record. The Giants are outside us at 2 2 on Ned's market. It's incredible. So, um, yeah, it should be a good good round of footy. And then Sydney Sydney Dogs and Crows Hawks. Who, who would have thought that'd be a blockbuster at 4.40 on a Sunday afternoon? I know. There's plenty of value there for the punters. And we'll get into some of those surprising markets in uh, just a second. I do want to talk about the Q clash, though, the, the second Q clash of the season. The Lions won the first one back in round eight. It was a, a bit of a fizzer, low-scoring kind of game. Um, the Suns, as you've already noted, are very, very tough to beat at home. Uh, Gold Coast won the hitouts when they last met, but uh, Brisbane scored 30 more points than Gold Coast from intercept possessions. I was at the Lions game yesterday. We're recording this on a Monday, and uh, Hugh McCluggage was huge. Joe Danaher was huge early on. Cam Rayner got a couple as well. Um, They look very unstoppable uh, up forward, particularly in that fourth quarter. How do you see the Suns combating Brisbane's attack? Yeah, going back to that first one, the Gold Coast Suns had the Lions um, bread and butter. They should have won that game. Lions had, I think, four injuries by half time. It was the um, it was the carnage game with all the knees. I think from memory. So Gold Coast, they've just got to play the way they do at home. <laughs> as silly as it sounds, they just got to go after them, make sure they win contested footy clearances. We know the Lions, their their one wood is those clearances and ability to score off them when they're up and about. Lockie Neal had a bit of a quiet game yesterday, but. Um, they've got to make sure that they get that midfield dominance. The Suns, they've got some good players through there. But they're just a different team at home. So 245 is good value. I'm leaning towards the Lions. I think they'll they'll get the job done. They're probably the most informed team in the competition at the moment, the Brisbane Lions, over the last sort of seven, seven eight weeks. But uh, for Gold Coast, they've just got to find a way to get it in their front half, give their tools, King, these guys, an, an opportunity to kick a score, and they might go a long way to them winning the game. If you were Chris Fagan, uh, how are you sort of attacking Sam Flanders this week? 43 touches for the Suns, uh, monster effort in round 19. Do you think they put a tag on him? don't know if they'll put a tag because they've, they've got some more damaging around the inside of the contest. I think you've got to take care of Matty Rao, first-hands player, um, Noah Anderson as well. 
um, whether Tuke Miller plays or not is, is another thing as well. But I think they've got so many weapons through that midfield. I think they'll back in their midfield midfield versus me, midfield unless one of them starts to get off the chain and then you look at a Jared Berry um, or a Dunkley potentially to do a matchup. I reckon Dunkley will go to Rao at stoppages um, to start the contest and then see how it plays out from there. But... Um, I, I don't think they'll go a tag on Flanders, but again, they've got some got some good weapons at Gold Coast Suns now. Look, we've got to shift our attention now to Perth. We're going to keep the attention, though, on the midfield because uh, the Western Derby, the second one of the season, shapes to be a pretty interesting one from a midfield perspective. West Coast won the first one in surprising fashion back in round six, but... Look, I don't know if we can put too much stock into that game considering Frio was coming off uh, about a fortnight of playing down in Adelaide. Um, as I said, the midfield battle is going to be big. Caleb Sarong was huge last week. Brayshaw, 41 touches. Sarong's firming into the Brownlow market again as well. Who do you see winning the midfield battle in this uh, derby showdown, mate? Yeah, I think Fremantle, I think with their aspirations, where they want to get to, they've almost, um, if they want to keep that top four dream alive, which we know if they want to go deep, they've got to do that. I was certainly wrong at the start of the year. I wrote them off, thought they were no chance. So shows how good I was. But they're, I think Fremantle get the job done, get it done pretty convincingly. West Coast have had that spike once you sack a coach or move on a coach. I think they got a bit of a spike in performance and they were lacklustre on the weekend. Um, over in Melbourne obviously getting home gives them an opportunity but St Kilda to be smashed by St Kilda by 72 points they're just hanging on to the end of the year and I think um, Fremantle will, will have their way with them and I think they'll, their midfield will dine out that the guys that you mentioned Sarong um, Brayshaw etc that I think they'll have really really big games that's a nice little segue into our multi but before we get to that we do have three uh, quite surprising betting markets looking ahead to round 20 the first is Essendon has opened as a favourite against St Kilda at Marvel. We've got Melbourne as the favourites, only slightly against GWS at the MCG. And the other one you alluded to at the top of the show, Adelaide slight favourites at home to Hawthorne. Which one of those games surprises you the most? It has to be the Giants. The way Melbourne played yesterday, I know they expect to get Max Gorn back into the lineup, but how they can come up as dollar eighty favourites against the Giants, who seem to be back to to the better better footy. They're starting to string a few wins together. They're they're alive in that top eight. Melbourne is sort of just hanging on. I think that's the one that surprises me the most. I th- I think you can understand why Essendon go in slight favourites in that game. St Kilda. Like again, they, they beat West Coast, but we don't know where West Coast are out there, sort of just hanging on, as I just said. So, you can understand that. And then the Adelaide Crows, they've played some pretty good footy in the second half of the year, and they are a better team at home. But again, Hawthorne are on this hot streak as well. Your Hawks, they're, they're September dreams still alive. So, um, I can sort of understand the other two to a degree, but I, I, that's the, the Melbourne Giants market. I just can't understand. And I'll probably sit here next week and look like a fool for saying that. But <laughs> their midfield was touched up, and I know they had no recognisable Ruckman, but to go, I think they it's the lowest ever recorded clearances at half time. Like your ability just to fight and compete at ground level was just non existent from their midfielders. So that's normally their strength, and uh, no doubt they would have got a bit of a revving, but. They played yesterday, six-day break, coming back from Perth against a Giants team that will be well-rested and, and ready to go. I, I'm just all in on the Giants this week. Good time to be a fan of Hawthorne and the Giants. Not a good time to be a fan of this show's multi because we're still <laughs> searching for a second win. I let us down last week. I took the Bombers minus 10.5 against the Adelaide Crows. Uh, the less said about that game, the better. I think uh, the Bombers lost that game rather than the Crows actually winning it. Um, but anyway, Dill came good. He uh, took the Giants 1-39 to against the Suns. And you had an absolute fill-up. Charlie Kerno, four-plus goals versus North Melbourne. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take that. But unfortunately, it was for, for no good reason in the end. But uh, four-plus is always good value. Yeah, sorry, boys. Uh, look, we're going to go back to four legs this week. Just you and me, Rocky. I'm taking the Brisbane Lions minus 10.5 to cover against the Gold Coast Suns in the Q Clash. Um, and I also like Fremantle to cover in the Derby minus 36.5. 
you're sticking with the player markets? Yeah, player markets. I'm going to go the same game. So we're going to have a couple of same game multis. I'm going to go Charlie Cameron 3+. plus. I think he might have a bit of a afternoon out on the Gold Coast. So I'm going to go him 3+. plus. And also in the uh, the derby over there, I'm going to go Sarong 35+. plus. I think he gets up for these games and normally dominates them. So add a bit of value to the multi, I think. And I think we'll... Uh, I think we might get the chocolates this week. Oh, fingers crossed. Hard to argue with that logic. Uh, just to recap, we've got the Lions to cover against the Suns. Charlie Cameron to kick three-plus goals in that same game. Frio to cover in the derby against West Coast. And Caleb Sarong, 35-plus disposals. $25.86 for that one. Where can the punters find it, Rocky? In the, um, I don't know, Ned's app and uh, <laughs> somewhere else, I think, <laughs> Puts you on the spot there, mate. Good to see you've been paying attention for the last one. <laughs> I normally tune out when you go on this spiel. Yeah, no, fair enough. Good chat as always, mate. We'll do it next week. Good on you, mate. You're listening to Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions. You are listening to Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions. Dylan Leach and Alistair Lynch back with you, uh, Rocky. Good luck with a multi this week. Yeah, good value, 25 to 1. 25 to 1. A couple of same game multis. So what you've, you've <laughs> gone in on the value. so you've gone in on the Q Clash and the Western Derby. That's right. Yep. Okay. Oh, I wasn't in take me through it. Yeah, go. Yeah. So He's lines, meant to recap at the end of the show, but we'll oh, do another recap. Nah, we'll yeah. Lions minus ten and a half. Charlie yeah. Cameron three plus. Yep. Charlie needs a little rocket, little probe to get going. Sarong yeah. thirty five plus and Fremantle minus thirty six and a half. Okay. $25.36. Juicy. Hey, it's juicy. <laughs> Optimistic. <Very> juicy. <laughs> Optimistic. <laughs> hey, you've you got to believe sometimes. You've got to believe. You, know, you have got to believe. Hey, uh, Friday last week, yes. you two had the absolute pleasure of playing with the our good friends at Breaking the Yips and Hello Sports uh, Hacker Majors Day which is, Lynchy, probably the loosest golf day. Yeah. You were representing Ned's. You were representing the podcast. Yeah. Uh, I, and I, what did I describe it as last week? I said, Auskick live golf. It's like Auskick for learning how to play live golf, basically. Yeah, it's pretty wild. That's the best it's way to describe wild. it. I've played uh, in a few golf days. Yeah. And even you saying that it was a, a loose sort of golf day. Yeah. <laughs> That's sort of understating it. I've never, seen, I haven't seen anything but, like it. But, so, for those of you, those of you at playing at home, can you paint the picture for those who weren't there? Explain the hacker majors, what it was all about, yeah. why you were there. Well, I don't really know why we were there, we but Neds, Neds, Neds is the major sponsor, I think, yep. of the day. So they um, obviously we sponsor put in Hello a couple, Sport and the ha- yep. um, breaking the yips. Yep. Put in a couple of teams. So we, uh, me and Lynchy, headed down. We were part of the team, but to paint the picture, it's Wynnum Golf Club. Um, yep. So Bayside in Brisbane. I think it's I think Lee, Lee Matthews Golf Club. Yeah, Lee top. plays down there. Yeah. Nice course. Yeah. I think the gates open about ten o'clock, and <laughs> it's fair to say that a few had started before ten o'clock. There's I reckon they had a couple of refreshments <laughs> on the way up. It's where the ninth. <laughs> Hole was in the first hole. There was uh, a few teams kind of that atmosphere. were, um, yeah, they were that team in the pink, and yeah. they were on a different level. And, uh, everyone had to dress up as dress different up. teams. There, there was one team that stood out that was all dressed up like John Daly. Yeah, they, 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 they were, were easily best, best dressed for the whole uh, day. I thought. Yeah, pretty wild. Fifteen holes, um, shotgun start. Supposed to tee off at twelve o'clock, but by the time we started, it was about quarter past, and it's just <laughs> chaos. It's pretty much hit your ball if you can't find it, or if it's not in the middle of the fairway, just leave it. Yep. So I think Lynchy ended up with on the last hole twenty five balls. Oh, or something. Yeah. yeah, twenty agates in about a twenty meter <laughs> space. And they finish in groups of eight. Yep. And um, hopefully the course stood up all right for the Saturday comp the next morning. I think it would have, yeah. would have been tired. So me and Lynchy, um, Ryan, who we do this show with, and he yep. does the um, NRL as well, and Liam Fogarty, who's on the Fox. NRL podcast, NRL yes. podcast yes. they got roped in because I think our yeah, other talent pulled out late. Jarrell. Jarrell, and yeah. he had someone, but they were away or something. And you didn't play. No. Which was... I took one for the team. But admittedly, his golf game has improved, <laughs> which is scary. We had a look at you on one hole, that yeah. 14th there. And actually, you hit the ball. Also, Matt from our social team, he was giving me some tips on how to do a swing for a little bit. So uh, there, there will be a video actually being made uh, probably in the coming weeks where I was... So I was looking after hole 16, oh, 16 which was the Ned's yeah. hole. Um, and if you got it in one, you'd either win five grand or the closest to the pin won a grand each. So naturally, five people got a thousand bucks, thanks to nice. Ned's. So they had a nice time. But um, as each team came on, I asked them for how to improve my golf swing and then actioned it afterwards. So that video will be... Out in a couple of weeks' time, and you'll see me improve my golf swing. 
getting back to yep. um, it was good to see getting back yep. to our game it was yep. pretty much a two two ball best ball. Um, yep. I don't not sure Ryan's played a lot. He was very frustrated, wasn't he? After yeah, about he's the third slightly hole. disgruntled. That doesn't Late surprise me brand. about Ryan. That's very on brand for Ryan. Yeah. And I would say that I started okay, sort of yep. carried us through the first few holes, and then, I was putrid. And then Lynchy, putrid. Lynchy came home with a wet so He was outstanding. I saw a bit of Lynchy on the course, mate. You've got absolute Tourette syndrome when you're on the golf course. <laughs> you're. Yeah, I've got a bit I mean, yeah. I'm glad that you're not on any Fox footy golf shows or anything like that because yeah. you had your well, moment. I with, am. <laughs> oh, oh, you are. Yeah, Goodness, I wouldn't soon. want to be the editor there because you had your moment with ruck work a few years ago. I heard more than ruck work on the golf course. Oh, it looks my happy place. Just sort of Oh, relaxed, well, clearly it was your happy place. Yeah. His first tee shot went on the road. <laughs> I, think. Yeah, I can't even think of it. Remember oh, it I did go on the road. Yeah, yeah. yeah I hit it well. But probably yeah, shouldn't just have the driver. Yeah, yeah, but he one. came good. So he ended up playing with another group of guys. There was four, four guys from the Gold Coast. They were... Um, outstanding fellas. I think and they had another team name, but we'll yeah. just go with four We ended up about there. four under, yeah. I think, yeah, which was pretty bad. good. For a two ball. For a two ball. <laughs> and we were knocking in a few putts. And yeah. um, Lynchy actually, they wanted to play a couple of holes. holes. Uh, they were eagles or something they called. They yeah. had this sculling device oh. that they put in. They wanted to do a couple of bets um, with us on whether we won the hole or lost. And Lynchy came up. Massive, massive clutch. Oh, I had to hang in there. Chips and parts. He saved us. I was, I was very lucky. Dropped a few parts, and yeah, we we did well late just to save our pants. But one of the all-time great golf great days. Great golf day. Jeez, they get into it. They enjoy it. And and, um, you, and you've been on a few golf days in your time. Yeah, that was no, no, nothing like that. Yeah, I've never seen a <laughs> comp with groups of eight going around. And the um, yeah, the the stock standard uh, golf etiquette and sort of w- was well out the door. It was gone before yeah. the tee-off. Yeah, yeah. So there was a few groups that had played in the morning, obviously, at Wynnum, and they were trying to usher them off the course. They were putting. There was people singing, <laughs> carrying on. They wouldn't have been too happy, the locals. Nah, but it was good. Um, they put on a good day, that's for sure. So Lynch, look forward to getting back. Lynchy and I were sober, so it was a bit different. If you were having a few beers, but me and Lynchy, responsible, of course. Just no, I'd expect nothing and less from sandwiches you. Sandwiches and... All professional yeah. when we put the Ned's Ned's gear on. That's it. Well, if you're going to wear the big N, you can't let it down. <laughs> That's it's right. really important to rep the brand. Uh, but thanks for having us, and me and Lynch will play any time. Yeah, and, we're and, there. Uh, look, I'm just taking up my golf lessons, and who knows? Maybe one day I'll be able to join you blokes for a hit. Maybe one day. One day. Persistence is important. Nah, I reckon Yeah, the biggest, biggest thing for you is grab the left-handed stick. <laughs> I reckon just as a, yeah, as a heads up, I'd grab the left-hander. Yeah. yeah, you're awful, awful. Swing. <laughs> I'll see you down the driving range. I tell you, as, as an awful swing, yeah. and we probably shouldn't go there. No, go he's there. Our boss, Tommy Hackett. Oh, he's terrible. <sighs> His swing's not pretty, but he was actually yeah. a bit effective, wasn't he? He it was. was. It was yeah. a couple of holes. Tom Hackett is the head of content for NT. He pretty much runs, runs. Yeah, he runs, runs Ladbrokes and Neds, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does. Everything. Yep. But yeah, just used his guile just to get it down the middle. <laughs> his swing's not pretty, but it ended up being a bit effective. Oh, I reckon by the late in the day, he had the best swing on the course. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's some awful things going on. Oh, well, shout out to uh, Breaking the Yips and the uh, Hello Sport Boys with the Hacker Majors. Um, do follow Breaking the Yips on socials, and they do appear on the Ned's Instagram as well. It's uh, just some great golfing yeah. uh, advice there. But yes, it's it's not normal golf, as I said. I think no. I think for footy in footy terms, it's basically it's pretty much a Mad Monday footy trip mm. f- in footy terms. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah, it's Mad Monday where you play golf. Yeah, on a Friday. Pretty much. Yeah. actually, it's not a bad way. Of for Mad club, Monday clubs where you to play probably golf. do it because it's pretty safe. Might be if onto got something. A, if yeah. you get a club. A golf club that looks after you. They can run mm. a muck and carry on. Like do that. Yeah, okay. That's a I, good I'd idea. book them in like just it. before you doing your Renos, though. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just before, yeah, yes. Just or maybe before. just do a public course yeah. just for the sake of it. Time to wrap up here on Ned's AFL on Popular Opinions. I ask this every single week as we wrap up on the show. What are we looking forward to? Round twenty. Would you believe it? Round 20 of the AFL. It goes quick. We're almost August. It feels like we just had Christmas not long ago. But um, I am looking forward to Friday night. Probably oh. a bit of Port Adelaide bias. But Carlton off a five-day break. They've got a few injuries. De Koning we've heard about. Yeah. He's um, yes. probably out for the season um, at this point in time. He might, might get back for finals. But Port... Don't know where they're at. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a bit like the Western Bulldogs. You flip the coin. If the good turns up, they're outstanding. If the bad turns up, who knows what's going to happen. Marvel, they shift the footy well enough. 
Carlton, quick turnaround, not going as well as probably they were a month or so ago. Mm. Got over the line against North Melbourne. So second v seventh, I think it sets up as a cracking Friday night game. Yes, indeed. Uh, what are you looking forward to? Q Clash. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Queensland is a state divided this week. I tell you what, the moment you hit Yatla, they don't want to know you. Does the, they um, do not want to know you. Does the winning streak keep going for the Gold Coast, having won every home game for the year, having lost every away game? If they can win against the Lions and stop the Lions' big run, they, they'll stay in touch with the top eight. So I, they're um, what is it, six points out of the top eight as it is, but a win, this will, could be a turning point. So... And, Touched them up last year yep, there, down there. as well uh, before Brisbane went on to play in the grand final. Oh, this might be a silly question. So if the Suns win this game, yep. will they be in for a barrage of criticism? It's like, well, you still look big and tough at home. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Th- that's the reality. Yeah. Th- and th- unfortunately... They just haven't matured to that. They're doing some good things. Like right. the, the win over Port Adelaide for the first time in 13 years. They've had some good wins mm. at home. But it's that next step where you've got to just crave going away. Mm. They should look forward to going away to opposition stadia where there's a massive crowd against you and love it. Mm. But they just haven't got that starch really to get it done at the moment. It's the progression of your development though, isn't it? Like if you can make your home ground an advantage for yourself, a really tough venue. We've seen it with Brisbane last year. They made it really tough. Port when they were really good. The teams, the Crows last Mm. year, I don't think they hardly lost at home. It's sort of a stepping stone and then you learn to win on the road. So I think it's good for them. It sets up as a good game. Yeah. It's... It is a stepping stone, but they've got to take that step. Yeah. Like, it yeah. just just won't happen. It just doesn't naturally happen. They've got to actually make it happen. Goes without saying this is probably the most consequential Q clash that's ever been played this week. I reckon we've, we've said that a few times, I reckon, in recent years. There have been some I, big ones. I but reckon yes. this one's pretty big. Well, I reckon the one at the Gabba was pretty big, mm. and the, the Suns gave nothing. Well, that was... Mm, got smacked. Oh, the, the Sunday night one. No, it was a year. Saturday. Ryan and I just spoke about it. It was when Brisbane had the carnage. I think it was where they had all their injuries. Yeah, was it? Logan yes. Morris' oh, debut. On. Yeah. Uh, well, they smashed him. They, yeah. like, they, they had no one on the bench and still smashed him. So, so yeah, right. looking forward to that one. That should be a great game. Absolutely. Or should be. Well, I'm looking forward to... Well, Sydney and the Bulldogs is an intriguing yeah. game Great. on yeah. Sunday. Personally, Richmond Collingwood could be interesting. If, if there's going to be an upset for the 18th on the ladder, Tigers. I'll tell you what, North good. Melbourne gave Collingwood a scare a few weeks back. Richmond, we've been playing all right the past few weeks. And if there's going to be one game the Tigers could get up for, it would be to absolutely ruin Collingwood's season. <laughs> That'd uh, be a great game. I, I'd enjoy that. Hopefully they get a good crowd there and everyone hasn't, like th- you, checked out. Oh, three quarters of the way through yeah, the season. That's amusing. But no, I think if you, <laughs> one o'clock on a Sunday. That's true. No, no, one o'clock on a Sunday. Plenty of ch- good time to get to the footy. You checked good out Red halfway Ball. through the third quarter oh, around 11. Oh, yeah. I did not check out. Well, I left early. Left. <laughs> I left early one time. 120 points. Didn't I had you? enough credits in the bank to leave early. <laughs> No, you hosted the yep, Richmond Queensland supporters gig, yep. got your fold in and left. Correct. <laughs> did a joke. I learned. Yeah, I, le- I learned from you actually on how to do that. <laughs> no, learned from you. Just blokes. give them back to the game. Absolutely. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Uh, and oh, yeah, also, what else? Do and you also like? the Western Derby. I know things are West Coast are grim, but it's always interesting. The Western Derby is always worth keeping an eye on. It's always a great fixture. You're going to watch that, are you? No, but it's keeping an eye on in case there's a fight or something. You never know. West, West Coast, Coast won earlier in the year. They did. Them. Harley Reid absolutely destroyed Fremantle. That Melbourne day. Giants. That's another ripper. It's just the whole weekend. It's good. good North Melbourne and Geelong in Hobart. Essendon yeah. St Kilda. Is Essendon St Kilda. All yeah. nine games. It's got, You know what? I'm looking forward to the whole round. Yeah. I'm also talked lo- me into it. I'm also looking forward to the Olympics as well. So in between footy and the so Olympics. So you're off this your last so, week? Yes. Three weeks. Yes, I should uh, clarify. So from next week, there's a change in the lineup here. At Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions, it'll be hosted by Mr. Tom Rockliffe. This is for concerning next... for you. If, no, if I fine. am going to host, you may not have a job when you come back. I've got a job when I come back. Uh, I'm not worried about uh, you, Rockliffe. Uh, 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 Ryan, we'll Ryan will be <laughs> stepping up as a panellist. Lynchy will still be here. Yep. Uh, but I, I am on next week's show because I've got an interview uh, that I pre-recorded with uh, Tony Shaw and Mark McClure heading into ah. the Carlton Hollywood game. So it's nice. actually a really Carlton good Legends. little chat. Perfect. There, uh, the two hanging shit on each other about the uh, various clubs. So that will be entertaining and also doubling up on YouTube. But yes, I am going off for a few weeks because I enjoy Paris. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to Paris, and by that I mean Sydney, uh, <laughs> to do the Olympics 24 years later for uh, uh, another mob for a couple of what, weeks. Uh, what 
time of the night you're working? Uh, I'm on the six. I'm actually not on a two bad shift. Six p.m. to two a.m. shift. I'm on. Oh yeah, so that's, that's not bad. That's pretty. That's better than the two a.m. to ten a.m. That's also on offer. So yeah. I'm glad didn't land that one. But no, pretty exciting experience. So well, good luck. Hope it goes very to well. That uh, I'm going to be watching judo and shooting and. Volleyball, <laughs> rowing, just all these great yeah. sports, but also the nine games of footy. So you blokes will be fine. Tom, you'll be fine hosting. Your moment is in, and I'll remember to let you recap the multi. Yes, the multi this week. Uh, well, you half host it now. Two, anyway. two same games. Well, I've been training him. Yeah, that's, that's why. It. It's, it's, into exactly. It. Yeah. Starting with the Q Clash, um, both derbies or derbies or whatever you want to say. Yeah. Brisbane Lions minus 10.5 and, and Charlie Cameron to kick 3 plus into Sarong to have 35 plus and Fremantle to win by 37 points or more. Mm-hmm. Multi that all up, $25. And, and where would I find that, Tom? Um, on the Ned's app in the, I don't know, AFL section maybe. <laughs> I sure. think my job's fine when I come back in a couple of weeks' <laughs> really? time. You know, Ryan asked me the same thing in the yeah. snapshot. That's why you've done that. Yeah. So I don't know where to find it. So what odds are you getting for Charlie Cameron? Uh, hit three? I'm not sure of the no, actual, actual odds. odds right but because he's can, done that twice this year. Well, he kicked five against <laughs> Richmond, didn't he? Yeah, he in did. one of the worst he performance. One of the worst five goal hauls you'll ever see. <laughs> oh, so it's five goals. So he's only really done it once then. Well, you can get him three thirty straight out. Oh, the yeah. estate of three. The estate of John Denver have been missing out on royalties. Yes. How good is that? That is, that is very good. That is very good. That's very good. John Denver. So it, it it's not on my playlist, but it is, the place is. Pumping. I'm surprised John Denver isn't on your playlist. You, <laughs> you don't listen to music. Well, to be honest, on, on about the seventeenth <laughs> tee, that the other day they go, oh, what, "What music do you like, Lynchy?" <laughs> oh, so John Moore's. Oh, I hate music. You hate music. <laughs> Speaking of music, to take us out this week on oh, Ned's AFL on Popular Opinions. Now, you would have noticed on the Ned socials, uh, we have gotten behind uh, the campaign to bring Tug of War back to the games uh, because tug of war was actually a, an Olympic sport. This is the longest rap in history. If anyone's still listening at this point, well done. Yeah. Just, you're riding your hosting gig <laughs> right to the beach, just, aren't you? I absolutely am just <laughs> clinging on to all on air team. But to take us out, uh, Neds have got behind the Tuggers, Australia's tug of war team, to get them back into the games for 2032. And mm. they've teamed up with legendary songwriter Tony Mojo uh, to perform a new anthem called Tug, Tug, Tug till 2032. And we here are all behind the Tuggers and we want to see tug of war back in the games. So to take us out... <laughs> Here's Tony Mojo featuring the Tuggers with Tug, Tug, Tug until 2032. I'll see you in a few weeks. The podcast is back. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> We've been tugging night and day, because that's the Aussie way. Let's show the world what Tuggers really do. Jack puts his back into every single tug. And Liam, he's stronger than an ox. On you, Liam. Dylan's holding tight. He's gripping like a vice. And when he tugs, he tugs it like a boss. He's a boss. Tug, 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 tug. Come on, Australia. Let's all have a tug. tug. Come on, Australia. Cause tugging's what we love. Tug. Come on, Australia. You know what to do. We're gonna tug, 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 tug. Till 2032. Tug. Come on, Australia. Let's all have a tug. Thanks for listening to Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions. Enjoyed the podcasts? Remember to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au.